Gradient factors. What are they? How do we use them as scuba divers? And really, how important are they to, say, even just a recreational diver versus a technical diver? Well, in today's video, we're going to answer all those questions, and hopefully this is going to give you a better understanding of what gradient factors are and why you should be using them as a scuba diver. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going to be exploring gradient factors and we're going to learn a little bit more about what they are and what type of diver actually calculates gradient factors. We're going to be looking at dive computers. We're also going to be looking at past courses such as the open water program, the science of diving program, and even the computer diving program because we are all taught gradient factors from the very beginning. They're just not really went into detail in those courses, but in today's video, we're going to go very in detail and show you exactly what they are, how you use them, and why you should be using them regardless of whether you're an open water diver, say a rescue diver, a dive instructor, or even a full-blown tech diver. So what are gradient factors? Before we get into that, we need to discuss what an M value actually is because the gradient factor is actually going to be a modification of that M value. So in short, your M value is the maximum amount of inert nitrogen that you can withstand throughout a dive. And there's many different ways to calculate this. Probably the easiest and the most simplest, what we all learn is dive tables. You know, with dive tables, it tells us what our maximum value of nitrogen is going to be. Once we've reached that maximum value, we are at what's called 100% saturation. Now, we're not super saturated, but we are at saturation. Once we get into the level of super saturation, that means we've went deeper than we should or stayed longer than we should, based off what the tables tell us, now we are in super saturation or otherwise known as decompression. That means as we come up to the surface, we're going to have more than 100% nitrogen within our our body. And that's something that we absolutely want to avoid, especially at the recreational level. Well, the dive tables are basically an algorithm, if you will, to tell us when we've reached that point of saturation. And we try to stay within that limitation. Now, your dive computer is going to do a little bit better job than the dive tables because it's going to be able to recalculate that M value throughout the length of your dive. Now, whether you've got, say, a recreational dive computer where it's an RGBM or reduced gradient bubble model, algorithm built in, or you have a technical dive computer that say is running the Bowman al algorithm. Now it's going to actually do a better job than the tables because as you ascend, it's actually going to show off the, or show you the bleed off rate of inert nitrogen as you come up. And it's going to constantly recalculate through that. Now we're really going to focus on the Bowman algorithm in this video because that's where we're going to go in and we're going to change the gradient factors throughout say the dive or the dive planning process. But at the end of the video, I'll also show you how you can do this on an RGBM computer as well, just to give you a better understanding of how you can stay safer as a diver. So now that we understand what an M value is, let's actually discuss what a gradient factor is. In short, a gradient factor is a modification to the algorithm itself. So if we think of a mathematical equation that's going to tell us how much nitrogen is in us at a certain depth, certain time, i.e. say the dive table is your computers, if we modify that algorithm, we can either make it more conservative or say more liberal. If we want to be a little bit more safe throughout the dive and more conservative to where we're not saturating quite as much, then we can lower the those gradient factors. And this is what I do with a lot of divers who are a little bit older. Maybe they got physical handicaps or maybe they have faster tissues than say what I do. We will lower the gradient factor throughout their training so that they're going to be a little bit safer. So now that you understand that, let's look at what a lower gradient factor is versus say a high gradient factor and how it affects us throughout a dive. So let's start with the low gradient factor. What does that number actually represent? Well, imagine if you will, as you descend down through the, the water column and you spend a certain amount of time, your body's going to be on gassing inert nitrogen. As we start to ascend, that nitrogen within the system will start to expand. Some of it's going to come out in your lungs and you're going to exhale it out, but a lot of it will expand out through your tissues. And that low gradient factor is going to be the level that you set 
for say your first decompression stop. So as you come up, you're going to hit a certain amount of absorption of nitrogen or expansion of nitrogen at that level. And that's what the low gradient factor is. Now the high gradient factor can also be called your surface gradient factor. That means what am I going to be when I hit the surface? Now, if you're diving, say a very liberal algorithm, say, or gradient factor of hundred to hundred, that means as you come up, you're going to be at hundred percent at your first decompression stop. And you're also going to be hundred percent at the surface. Now, most dive computers, whether it's RGBM or even the Bullman, they're going to be preset at say an 85, 85 algorithm that just, or gradient factor. That just simply means as you start to ascend, you hit your first stop, you're going to be at 85% saturation. And then of course, once you get to the surface, you're still going to be at that 85% saturation. Now, what a lot of tech divers do, or say a lot of older divers, or even divers that have some type of physical handicap or even faster tissues than most, they will lower those gradient factors based off their own personal health or their own personal well-being. If they want to be more conservative, they will drop them. One of the divers I dive with a lot, he really likes to dive, say, a 40, 70, gradient factor. And once again, as we're ascending to our first stop, we're going to be 40% saturated. Once we reach the surface, we're going to be 70% saturated. Now, if we go back to the M value, if we think of the M value as the maximum amount of nitrogen your body can withstand or say on gas before we become super saturated, all that gradient factor is doing is taking that 100% maximum and dropping it down a little bit to be conservative. Even the dive tables themselves are pretty much at an 85-85 gradient factor. That means the dive tables are going to be extremely conservative, let alone your computer that's going to be even more conservative. And then if you change the algorithm and change the gradient factors, you're going to be even more conservative as well. And in tech diving, that's exactly what we want to do is we don't want to necessarily push the limits, even though we're going beyond the limits, we want to set those limitations a little bit lower so that we're never going to reach that hundred percent. Now, even though your body itself is never going to be at that hundred percent in your mindset, you have to tell yourself, since I've lowered that level, that say high gradient, this is going to be my new 100%. So at a 40-70 gradient factor, that means that 70% is going to be the equivalent to somebody say on the RGBM algorithm diving 100-100. So even though you come up and you're less, less saturated than what say a recreational diver is going to be, you still have to be in the mindset that that gradient factor is your new maximum. So now that you got a better understanding of what gradient factors are and how they apply to us and how they change our M value throughout a dive, let's talk a little bit about who it actually applies to as a diver. Is it just for technical divers? Well, no, even all the way back in chapter three of the SSI open water diver program, we go over gradient factors and how they affect tissue saturation at depth. And we don't just stop there in chapter three of the SSI science diving in chapter one of the SSI computer diving, even on into the recreational decompression class, the extended range nitrox, extended range, extended range trimix, and even the technical extended range, we go over gradient factors and how we can lower those numbers to keep us safer and be more conservative when we're underwater. So gradient factors or gradient factors are going to apply to all divers, whether you're just recreational, technical, or even a dive instructor. It's going to apply to all of us. And I hope this video gives you a better understanding of what a gradient factor actually is. Now guys, at the beginning of this video, I told, talked a little bit about how you can change your gradient factor. We're going to look really quick at several different dive computers here, and I'm going to show you how you can change your gradient factor. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter what algorithm you're using, whether it's an RGBM reduced gradient bubble model, or say it's a Bullman dive computer, say a technical dive computer, you can actually go in and change your gradient factor. Now, some dive computers are going to have presets where you just choose which conservative or liberal algorithm you want to use. However, However, most tech dive computers are going to allow you to go in and customize those settings as well to set whatever gradient factor you actually need. So let's take a quick look at several different computers and show you just how easy it is to change whether you're using an RGBM or a Bullman algorithm. All right, guys, just to show you how you can change your gradient factor on different types of computers, we're going to start with the Mares Puck Pro. This is an older style computer. And one thing to remember about this one, this is a recreational computer. This is not a technical based computer. This is not something I would personally use for tech diving. However, you can change the gradient factors, even though this is running an RGBM or reduced gradient bubble model algorithm in it. All you've got to do is scroll through until you get to the set screen. Now we're going to press and hold on the set screen there. And then we're going to scroll through until it says set dive. 
and we're going to press and hold once again, and then we're going to go to what's called the P factor. Now, the P factor is going to be a little bit different than what, say, a gradient factor is, but it works basically the same way. We're going to have three different settings here. We're going to have P factor 0, P factor 1, and, of course, P factor 2. P factor 2 is going to be our most conservative setting. Now, I can show you really quick what that does. If I lock it into P factor 2 here, and then, of course, I back all the way back out to my plan screen here, I will show you how that actually affects say your diving itself. So I'm going to back all the way back out to my very beginning screen here and I'm going to go into plan and I actually passed it there so let's scroll back through. Let's go into plan. Now we're going to plan a dive on the most conservative algorithm or P factor or gradient factor. Now as I scroll up we're going to go to 100 feet. Now this particular computer is going to stop me at 99. We're going to call that 100 and you're going to see that my maximum bottom time is going to be 13 minutes. Now if I actually back back out and change back over to the P factor zero, you're going to see that it's actually going to give me a lot more time underwater on that more say liberal algorithm if you will. So we're going to go back into set dive again and we're going to go back over to P-Factor. We're going to change that P-Factor back to zero. We're going to lock that in. Now we're going to back back out. And we are going to go back into the plan screen one more time. And let's get out of here. These one-button computers do take a little bit of time to get through. But once we back back out, we should be able to go back over to the plan screen. Oh, pass it again. That's one, one thing about a one-button computer that... Usually happens is you always pass your target depth. All right, so now that we're back in plan, we're going to go to a depth of 99 feet yet again. And you will see that instead of 13 minutes of bottom time, by putting a more, alg or say, a more liberal algorithm or gradient factor or P factor, then, of course, I'm going to gain actually five minutes of bottom time there. All right, guys, really quick, we are going to look at a technical based dive computer and show you how to change the gradient factors there. This is my personal Mares Quad CI. This is running off, say, a Bullman algorithm, so it's going to be a little bit different than, say, a recreational dive computer where you're running, in, say, an RGBM. But you can see my current gradient factor is set at 8585, so we're going to go into the settings and change that really quick. All i got to do is simply enter settings, and I'm going to go into change dive or dive settings there. And so I'm just going to click through, and then I'm going to go down to what's called algorithm there. Click on it and you will see main gradient factor. As I click there, you're going to see there's several different presets that are going to be a little bit more conservative than say that 8585 setting. Or I can go in and actually customize it. Now these presets, think of those as the P factor on the recreational dive computer that we looked at. But I'm going to scroll up to customs here and I'm going to change this 8585 to say 4070. Once again, what do these numbers represent? 40 or that low gradient factor is going to be my current set saturation level as I send and get to my first decompression stop. And then of course the high gradient factor is going to be what my gradient or say my saturation level will be once I reach the surface. Now if you follow along throughout your dive and you leave these gradient factors up on your computer, then you will actually know exactly when you go into decompression. Not only will your computer tell you that you're going into decompression, but you will notice that these numbers are going to be climbing throughout your dive and at any given time, whatever that top gradient is, at any given time, if your top gradient is higher than what you preset, you are actually in decompression and require a decompression stop before you can actually reach the surface. So just as a quick recap, once again, a gradient factor is nothing more than a change in the algorithm itself or a modification to the algorithm that's going to lower what our maximum saturation level can be or our M value. And this affects all divers. As I stated earlier, we learn about this in open water program. You're going to see it again in the science of diving, the computer diving, the decompression diving, or any of the technical diving programs from SSI. And hopefully this gives you a better understanding of what gradient factors are and how they affect us as as divers. But if you got any questions, please drop me a comment down below and I'll try to help you out the best I can. If you do want to learn a little bit more about gradient factors, check out all the programs that I've listed earlier in this video. I will link them down below. And if you are already certified in those programs, just simply go back and reread the material. It's a great thing to go in and to review things that we may have forgot about throughout our training. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. Once again, if you got any questions, drop me a comment down below and we'll discuss. It. But until our next video, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.